We have a Cajun feel as we kick off this bowl championship series. Friday morning games, Friday afternoon games, I should say. The number one ranked LSU Tigers going up against the number 32 Western Athletic Champions, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. It's SEC champs versus WAC champs. And this should be quite a fun game and an interesting one. Number one seeded teams are only two and two in BCS playoff history and the other two wins, they didn't come by way of a blowout either, but these are some different teams. LSU Tigers, of course, the only undefeated team left in all of college football. They have remained absolutely dominant on the year. And Louisiana Tech snuck into this one by way of only a conference championship, the only reason they're here. But they're hoping they can pull off the upset. They didn't have to travel far to get here. And we're taking a look at Hunter Lee, the running back for the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. Hoping to have a, a nice game today. And this should be a fun one. The Bulldogs and the Tigers. Who wants it more? Last season, LSU defeated West Virginia in the r &L Carriers New Orleans Bowl to head on to the second round, which is the Chick-fil-A Bowl. They eventually lost to the Ohio State Buckeyes, and that team, of course, Ohio State, would go on to win the national championship. So there has been some talk. Should LSU pull it out, they will have first pick at a second-round bowl game. One of those choices is the Chick-fil-A Bowl. However, their second-round opponent, we already know, the winner of this game will move on to play the Georgia Bulldogs. Would the LSU Tigers dare go after the Georgia Bulldogs in a rematch in Atlanta? They already took care of them once in the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Do they dare challenge them again in their home state, or would they try to pull them away and maybe go to the Liberty Bowl or go somewhere in Florida? LSU, who's... Been messing around with their running backs a little bit. That one was Alfred Blue. They used to use Spencer Ware a whole bunch, but now they've kind of been alternating between Blue and Michael Ford. So quick first down. The Tigers already find themselves down in Bulldog territory. This time, they go to the running play once again, and there's not much on that run from Blue. Spencer Ware was their dominant starting running back, but ever since the last few games, looks like LSU kind of pushed Spencer Ware to the back. On 2nd and 12, Jordan Jefferson screens it out to Reuben Randall, and Randall is going to get stopped for a loss of zero. So now after that initial opening run, this Louisiana Tech defense is holding tough and forces the LSU offense into a 3rd down and long. Jefferson is going to go for the end zone. He's double covered, intercepted. Jordan Jefferson is going to be picked off. How about this opening stance? For Louisiana Tech, that is an interception by Cooper. No, Javante Crow, the safety from Ruston, Louisiana. LSU, we have the talks about if they're going to take the Chick-fil-A Bowl in the second round because that's the home state of Georgia. There are some talks about whether or not they take the New Orleans Bowl going up against Tech. They felt pretty confident, but right now, they're on the ropes. Ed Hockley is going to call him for an offside. Ryan Baker... and gift wrap this one for Louisiana Tech. So it looked like Louisiana Tech first play struggled a bit, but after that the defense came through. It'll be first and five, inside handoff to Hunter Lee. And that's enough for a first down, and here comes Louisiana Tech. They're rolling again. Number one seeds are only two and two. Auburn losing last year to Troy, and then of course four years ago, Ohio State losing to FAU. It'll be second and ten. That's a completed pass down the field. Finally getting up to about the 45 where he gets brought down. And the other number one seeds, they had a tough time. Oklahoma, a couple of years ago, they only beat Navy by one point. And then Alabama, when they made it to the Final Four two years ago, they only beat Buffalo. I believe it was Buffalo they played. They only beat them by a field goal. And that one will go incomplete. Quarterback Nick Isom. Or pardon me, that's Colby Cameron. That's who they've been. It was uh, Nick Isham who they used early on in the season, but uh, they've been using uh, Cameron 
Colby Cameron late here, including a couple of big rallies. And it actually is some who they use when they start off 1-4 and four since they switched to Cameron. He hasn't lost a single game for Louisiana Tech. That's including a 44-0 win last week against New Mexico State. Third down and seven, and he's going to go down. So LSU defense will step up tall after an initial surge by this Louisiana Tech team. And that was an LSU quarterback sack by Greg Lawson, the safety. And now they have to kick it away to the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. The sophomore from right here in New Orleans. And Honey Badger's going to let it roll. Alrighty, well, how about this start? We're trading a couple of drives, and who would have thought it would have been Jordan Jefferson already with the one interception screenplay. Jefferson, that's going to be incomplete pass. Ruben Randall. There's the grab, and he simply gets undercut by the linebacker, Alex Johns. And Alfred Blue didn't like what uh, Johns did, but. Second down and 10. Jefferson, he will scramble. Slides just short of the first down. That's what Jefferson likes to do. He's got to make plays happen to speed him. Again, LSU, they're well-known, well-documented, slow starters. They always start the game off slow. They've had so many comeback victories. So don't be surprised if we go into the second half and Tech is leading. That's, that's LSU's game. Alfred Blue, he gets stopped, and that's going to be a three and out. Louisiana Tech, here we are. They're stepping up strong. Sonny Dykes and company at 8 and 4, the WAC champions. They have some experience against SEC folk. They played Mississippi State earlier this year, only lost by six points in overtime. I mean, other than that, they've been on a seven game winning streak ever since making the move to go with uh, to go with Colby Cameron at quarterback. And Cameron's going to find his receiver, so that'll make it a second and four. That's a six-yard completion for the Bulldogs. We could have an all-Bulldog second-round matchup between Louisiana Tech and Georgia. If Louisiana Tech could pull the upset off, they'll be welcomed with another SEC team in Georgia. So they'd have to go back-to-back -back SEC schools. And there you see again, quarterback sack, second one of the day on LSU by Greg Lawson. Third down and 10 for Tech. And they decided to hand it off. It's not going to work. Colby Cameron. And they will be forced to punt it away. Ball's fielded at the 20, up to the 25 for the Honey Badger. That's as far as he will go. Les Miles trying to get his LSU offense going. They were held to a three and out last time up. That one is in the hands of his receiver. That is caught. Jordan Jefferson over to his open wide receiver, and that is... That 85. Who's 85? Hmm. Well, we'll try to get a name on him next time then. <laughs> Jefferson from the gun. And that one will be good for five yards. It's to Alfred Blue. Number one of the nation, LSU, going up against number 32 in the nation in Louisiana Tech. Louisiana, Louisiana, and the New Orleans Bowl. RNL Carriers. Jefferson is going to go. Jefferson gets hit, and down goes Jordan Jefferson. Got to credit Louisiana Tech so far, not letting Jefferson make those big scrambles that he's known for. 
And on the tackle was Ik Ibukapitita, defensive lineman. Goodness gracious, I'm going to try. I apologize, I don't know every single player of all 120 teams perfectly offhand. Oh, there we go. That's going to be an LSU touchdown. It was just a matter of time. Touchdown, and that is Odell Beckham. That is number 85. And he burns them. Touchdown. Yeah, there's George Jefferson, so that's what we were looking for. Lolly Beckham wears 33. I'll try to get that fixed. I mean, a little number issue. That happens sometimes with these, uh... <clears throat> these players' numbers get switched. Can't always get them perfect. We'll try to look into that. Odell Beckham, though. Gets things started off on the right foot for his team. 7-0. LSU leads Louisiana Tech. Now it's Bulldog time. I'm sure a lot of people have been impressed so far with the way the Louisiana Tech has handled this LSU offense up to this point. First and ten. There he goes. And he's going to go down at the 40, 39 yard line to bring up a second down and one. And of course on the run that was the quarterback Colby Cameron. We have a flag. Let's, oh, no, we don't. Part, excuse me. That's the end of the first quarter. So with the first quarter in the books, it's LSU 7 and Louisiana Tech 0. Here in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. It's just awful to say. I'm sorry. Uh, and, of course, if LSU, by being the number one seed, if they can get through this round and the next two rounds, they'll be right back here in the Superdome for the final two games of the BCS playoffs. So what an advantage this is for LSU to have three of five games in this stadium. Incomplete pass, and it was Taylor that was looking to come away with the interception. Couldn't quite make it happen. Brandon Taylor. Third down and one. They just need one yard, and they can't quite get it. Pressure. First... No, not a first down. That one was dropped. Incomplete, looking for one yard, and they couldn't do it. And now they got a they got a punt away to the dangerous Tyron Matthew. Feel that about the 16, and Matthew's gonna get hit. Can't do much on the return. Louisiana State looking to add to this seven-point lead. Jefferson, over the middle, Ruben Randall, and first down, Tigers. Look at Randall, he's busting away from the line, he cuts in, there's a catch, and first down. First down and 10 now at the 32 yard line. And off to Blue. Blue's got an opening. Blue's off to the races. Alfred Blue hits the yellow end zone. Touchdown, LSU Tigers. 13 to nothing. Two blocks that you saw by the offensive lineman, Will Blackwell, the guard, the senior, that set up that touchdown for Alfred Blue. There you see the fans saying, Go Tigers! 69 yard run for Alfred Blue and LSU. 14 to 0. For both of these teams, for these student athletes, they've had a really fun two weeks in the city of New Orleans, getting to see some of the sights and the sounds and, uh, you know, all the charitable events that they get to do leading up to Bowl Week. It's been a lot of fun for both of these teams. A 
Rolling out. And that's going to be good for five yards. Here comes Louisiana Tech trying to make something happen before they let this one get too far out of reach. Play action. That's a first down. Down to just past the 40-yard line. And that was wide receiver Quentin Patton who made the reception. He leads the team in yards. 1,000 receiving yards, 10 touchdowns. First down. Oh, incomplete. Just missed the target. Second down and 10. Ball at the 40. We got 4.02 to go in the second quarter. Cameron on the halfback slit screen. And that's not going to be enough. Third down and 10. No huddle. Can they keep this SEC defense on their toes? Lots of time. Oh! Almost intercepted, incomplete, and LSU will hold Louisiana Tech, so they're going to have to punt it back away. Honey Badger will get this one. Oh, there go, there he goes. I thought maybe, maybe we get the big Honey Badger return. Didn't happen yet. Imagine if we still had the XFL. He probably, when he goes to the pros, would put Honey Badger on the back of his jersey, but... NFL don't let you do that. No creative freedom of expression in that league. Jefferson will option it. That's a fumble. It'll go out of bounds, or maybe they're rolling it incomplete. What is Ed Hockey League going to rule? Well, second down and 10 nonetheless. Option play did not work there for Jefferson and company. Jefferson, oh, avoids the sack, knocking the defender away, and then races forward to get four yards third and six this would be a small moral victory for the tech defense we got five wide now jordan jefferson he gets it out of bounds so louisiana tech will hold him off here comes the the punt booted away course we got going on right now on ESPN2, the Pinstripe Bowl. You know, tune into that one. It's Michigan and Nebraska, Big Ten Showdown. But right now, we got champion versus champion, SEC champs versus the WAC champs. A lot of people thought that it might be Nevada that was going to make it in as the WAC champions, but then Louisiana Tech was able to get the win. Over the Wolfpack and knock them out. There won't be back-to-back -back appearances in the BCS playoffs for the Wolfpack this time around. Hunter Lee was shoved back for a loss of five. Now we got to go out of shotgun. Here comes the option. He has it to Hunter Lee. Hunter Lee. First down and more. Louisiana Tech will get the ball now at the 49-yard line. They're going to option one more time. Down, down, down he goes. Louisiana State defense, and that was Taylor, the safety, in on the tackle. Cameron just trying to get this offense going. If they can move down and score, it's only a one-possession game at this point. It has not been a beating yet. This defense has had, held LSU in check, but again, LSU is slow starting. It's usually in the second half that things really pick up for Louisiana State. Cameron and company, they look to the sideline, they get the call from Dykes. We got a pass. Over the middle, that is in the hands of the receiver. First down, down to the 20 yard line, into the hands of Quentin Patton, and Louisiana Tech is in business at the 20. They are in the red zone. First and 10. Here comes the handoff. Breaks away from a tackle. Hunter Lee. Six yard pickup. Here come the ball. No, that was Lennon Creer this time they gave it to. On second and four. Pressure. There's a throw. Knocked away by Taylor. And Taylor has been all over the place today. Third down and four. And Tech 
wants to get to their blue end zone. They can see the home blue and they're like, that's us. Can we get there? Cameron, he runs it. Fumble, LSU football. Oh, what a fumble. What a forced play. Watch, this was just a shoulder tackle. Watch the shoulder tackle. Boom. Shoulder buster, shoulder breaker by Lawson. Greg Lawson, 208 pounds sophomore, just stopped that Louisiana Tech drive in its path with a throwing the shoulder and knocked Cameron out with one shoulder, one shoulder spike. That was insane. Inside handoff to Blue. Six yard run. Second down and four. Got some motion. There's a snap. Jefferson. Open receiver. And that'll be a first down for LSU. Here we go. LSU trying to make it 21 to 0. Jefferson. He's pressured. Completes it. Eight yard gain. Second and two. We're in the pistol. We got flags on the field. Ed Hockley Jr., what do you got? Calling false start against the LSU Tigers. So back them up. Jefferson. He's going to do it on his feet. First down and then some. Timeout will be called. One minute to go. A lot of people have got to be impressed with this Louisiana Tech defense thus far. Down goes Jordan Jefferson. Quarterback sack for Matt Brah. A senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And down goes Jefferson. He was able to break away from Alex Hurst. Go in there and get the sack. And that is sack number... How many has he had on the year? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is sack number eight on the year for Brah. Brings up a second and 19. And Les Miles says, let's just run it. Third and long. And Alfred Blue, of course, with the six yard pickup. Jefferson. Oh, we're going deep. Open receiver. Yes, and that is caught for a huge chunk of yards into the open waiting arms of D'Angelo Peterson. Incomplete, and I'm surprised that there wasn't a holding call. Looks like there's a lot of holding. Nine seconds now for the bull or for the uh, Tigers. Jefferson scrambling, avoids the tackles, avoids, gets in there, slides down, and that'll be enough for Drew Alleman to come on and attempt the field goal. Yes, sir. It is 17 to zero. Number one, Louisiana State has the biggest lead a number one seed has ever had against a number 32 seed in the BCS playoffs. It is 17 to zero. Louisiana State leads Louisiana Tech. We're gonna send it up to Lou Holtz, Mark May, Mark, Mark Reese, uh, and yeah, give it to all the guys up in the booth. Take it away, fellas. Third quarter is underway. Louisiana Tech football. You're right smack dab in the middle of the bowl championship series playoffs for 2011. The number one seeded LSU Tigers, the lone remaining undefeated team in the nation, going up against the Western Athletic Champion, D, uh, Western Athletic Champions, the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. And we're taking a look at some highlights from game tracks and defense has been a big part of the story here in the first half. 
Louisiana Tech off to an early start with that interception off of Jefferson, but since then, it has been all LSU. Bulldog football. They have it at the 28-yard line. Screens it out there. Incomplete. Second and 10. Again, football at the 28-yard line. Just underway here in the second half. That one's going to be knocked away. Incomplete. Simon on the defense. On the deflection. And there you see it there. Just one for six on the money down. Tex really got to start getting these third down conversions if they want to have a, a hope of pulling the upset. Cameron. Over the middle, and that one is good for a first down. They've had a couple of good moments doing things like that. And if only they would have scored on that last drive, they would be in business of really striking some fear into Les Miles and crew. They are down on the 20, 23. Cameron. Over the middle. Ooh. Nearly intercepted. And that was a dangerous throw, but... The linebacker just leaping up, Kevin Minter, sophomore. Play action, Cameron, incomplete. That was just dropped, and if you want to try to take out the number one team in the nation, Quentin Patton, you can't drop easy throws like that. That was right in your hands. That would have been good for a first down. Third and five. Throws it. Caught. Touchdown, Louisiana Tech. How about that? The Bulldogs are on the board. Into the hands of Icaro. The senior from Berkeley, California. Tabukai Akaro. And that is touchdown number five for Icaro. Matt Nelson will make it a tense point game. And Louisiana Tech, with an opening drive, goes right down the field, 72 yards in six plays. To cut the LSU lead down to 10, but the second half, it's scary, and this is where LSU really gets going. Oh, like just like we said, down to the 40, and that was... Claiborne that ran it back. Haven't called the Honey Badger's name too much in terms of defense or special teams in this one. On first down, pitch it to Blue. Blue trying to break a tackle and can't get it done. Second and four. Jefferson will throw it. Screen pass. Knocked away. Knocked away. That was Ryan Williams, defensive back from Mobile, Alabama, on the knockdown. Third and four. Can Louisiana Tech force another turnover? Or another punting situation, rather. Pressure on the outside. Oh, I think I spoke too soon. There's the turnover. Interception number two for Jordan Jefferson. I didn't mean to say turnover and jinx it, but Jay Dudley is able to get the pick. And Louisiana Tech near midfield is in business. Can the offense capitalize on Dudley's interception? Already in territory for LSU. That is Dudley's fifth interception of the year. Cameron's going to try to pull a Jefferson and not do as well. He goes down. Second and nine now. Pulling everyone back to the line. And now they wait. They get the call from Dykes. Sonny Dykes. Over the middle. Oh, first down. They're going to give it to him. I don't know about that call. That might be another missed call by Ed Hockley and company. He wasn't quite sure he had enough 
They say it's a first down. Another completed throw over the middle. And that's the man that's been doing it all day long. That's Patton. Second down and one. Tech's got momentum right now. There's the give to Hunter Lee and a first down. Chains are moving. Everything's going their way right now. Another throw over the middle caught by Patton. Second down and two. Can you believe this Tiger defense is on their heels right now? Louisiana Tech in this spread. And Tony Franklin, of course, second year head coach at Louisiana Tech. He was part of that spread offense when Troy played Louisiana Tech or Louisiana State back in about 2008. They had a 31 to 7 lead on those guys in the first half. He's using that same spread against Louisiana State now, and it's working well for him. Second and goal. They're at the four. They got everything stacked now. Pressure. There goes Cameron, and Louisiana Tech gets the touchdown. That's going to make it a four-point football game. They stack the line. And then Cameron just runs around the pile. Touchdown, Louisiana Tech. How about this turn of events? 14 unanswered points for the Bulldogs. Jordan Jefferson has tossed two interceptions. And now if you're Les Miles, you start thinking, do we possibly put Jarrett Lee back in there? Again, I reiterate, the number one seeds are 2-2 two and two all time in the BCS playoffs in the first round. The furthest a number one seed has ever gotten is the final four, and that was Alabama two years ago. Other than that, number one seed, the furthest they got was Oklahoma. They got to the Elite Eight. Elite Eight, Final Four, and then two losses in the first round for these number one seeded teams. LSU, they are on the ropes unless they can make a rally. That's a heck of a start into Bulldog territory to Odell Beckman. Beckham. Pardon me. Whew, I'm getting fired up on this one. This is getting exciting right now. LSU, 17. Louisiana Tech, 14. LSU, they do hold the advantage as the top seed because of the ticket sales. They get 68% of the ticket sales to the Superdome, but this is still a rowdy crowd for Louisiana Tech. That's incomplete. Way too much pressure on Jefferson. So there are a lot of fans on both sides. LSU, though, they were confident picking this bowl, thinking that it wouldn't matter. Having the Louisiana Tech fans here, also a short travel for this team. First down, LSU. Jefferson gives it to Russell, Russell Shepard. And you have to go back to that LSU fumble that they forced on Louisiana Tech when they are driving, I believe it was in the first quarter. You take that fumble away, Louisiana Tech might have the lead right now. That's a game changer, that fumble that was forced. Option to Blue. No love, down he goes, Alfred Blue. Second and seven. Jefferson, option again. Same exact play, same side of the field, and same exact result. The Mad Hatter said, let's see if we can fool him. Can't do it. Third and nine. Might think about taking a shot in the end zone now at this point. Down goes Jordan Jefferson. He gets sacked by Brandon Donahue. No, Adrian Cole. Adrian Cole, the linebacker from Mobile. Down goes Jefferson. LSU will have to attempt the field goal. Drew Alleman, we have a flag, let's wait.
It makes the field goal this much harder. That'll make it 52 yards. Alleman has not made a field goal from this far. That'll make him 0 for 2. The false start making it a 52-yard field goal. And LSU fans starting to get a little nervous right now. Louisiana Tech has all the momentum, and they just held LSU on that drive. Here comes Louisiana Tech quarterback. Colby Cameron. Cameron is a junior from Newberry Park, California. 6'2", 205 pounds. Open receiver, first down Louisiana Tech. That one was to Icaro. He's from Berkeley, California. That's California Connection. Cameron. There's it, open receiver over the middle. First down, Louisiana Tech. Here they come. That was Lennon Creer that got the grab, the running back. Ball is at the 30. This spread offense is just shredding this Louisiana State defense right now. We have a flag on the play. I think it's going to be a holding call. It is Chris Cavett. And that's frustrating because that will stall your drive a little bit. That takes any momentum you have and kills it just a bit. Now you're way back at the 40 when you were on the 30. Takes it right out of field goal range too. You just need a field goal to tie this thing up. Cameron. Screen. Nabbed by Miles White. That'll be the end of the third quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not want to go away. Louisiana Tech has the number one team in the nation. I don't know why this keeps happening every year. The number one seed, the most they've ever won by in DCS playoffs history, is three points. Two and two in first round gains all time. And once again, the number one seeded team is on the ropes. Cameron with the snap. Interception! Interception! We are going the other way! We are going the other way! Oh! Touchdown LSU Claiborne! Morris Claiborne! That might have just ended it. Cameron is absolutely distraught he threw that pass. Louisiana Tech was so close in that interception by Claiborne. Interception number eight on the year. He had an interception return for a touchdown against Georgia two weeks ago. And he does it here in the Superdome. Louisiana Tech had Louisiana State on the ropes. And that throw by Cameron might have just sealed their fate. Wow, what more can be said? How exciting are the Bowl Championship Series playoffs? Well, Cameron's got a shot at redemption. He's going to find... Wide receiver Patton for eight. Cameron will take the snap. Empty backfield. Over, ooh, overthrew his man. Incomplete. So third down and two. Trying to trying to grab momentum back as much as they can at this point. First step, no, incomplete. Incomplete pass. He was looking for Dennis Cop up too. Four down territory though, they gotta go for it. Here we go. Fourth and two, what do the Bulldogs have left? There's some pressure, that's first down. No, not a first down for Patton. 
I thought he had enough momentum to carry him to a first down. Referees say no way. Turnover on downs. Handoff to Blue. And you see, there he goes. That's what LSU does best. They make you pay for your mistakes. Ball is now placed at the 21-yard line. Four minutes to go in the game. Jefferson pressured. Gets it out to Blue. Blue fights forward and will get eight yards on the run. Second and two. Football at the 18. And off the blue. Blue breaks forward. First down. And Alfred Blue out to the four. I believe number four got it to the four. And in between the four and the five. Jefferson. End zone, touchdown LSU. That's got to be game, set, and match. Russell Shepard was in on the grab. LSU will extend the lead 31 to 14. I think I know what play of the game is going to be. after seeing what we've seen transpire here in this fourth quarter. Unbelievable. That's the only word that you can say after watching this. It's unbelievable. What an effort. It's effort like that. It's guts like that. And it's determination that says why we need playoffs in college football. Play action by Cameron. He He's loving that middle of the field. It's been really successful. Maybe that's something that Georgia needs to look at. Georgia and LSU. Looks like we have a rematch on our hands. An SEC title game rematch. Cameron gets out to the 45. The Bulldogs aren't giving up. Five wide now for Louisiana Tech. Cameron over the middle once again. And... That'll be enough for a first down. This this over the middle has just been so successful. Now it'll be second and inches. Intercepted. Here go the Tigers. You go to the well one too many often. One too many times. Once too often. And Louisiana State will make you pay for it. Kevin Minter with the pick six, the second one of this game. They went to the middle one too many times. And it was Minter who intercepts it and takes it back to the house. To extend the lead to 38. Now another opportunity for, well, we got a flag. So now we need to start talking about what we got coming up next. We have our first second round matchup decided. It's going to be LSU versus Georgia, the rematch from the SEC title game. What is LSU going to do? Because they get the number one pick of all the second round bowl games. A lot of people would assume the Chick-fil-A Bowl because it's close. It's right there in Atlanta. But that's also going to be big home field advantage for Georgia. You've already proved that you can beat them in that stadium, in that dome once. Do you do it again? Or do you take one of the three bowl games in Florida? You have the Outback Bowl. 
you have the Gator Bowl and you have the Capital One Bowl all in Florida. You also have up in Memphis the Liberty Bowl. Do you take one of those games? Or do you try to challenge the Bulldogs in Atlanta? What is LSU and Les Miles going to do? Quick three and out on the drive for Louisiana Tech. Colby Cameron. I think everyone's got to be impressed with this young man's effort. Not only taking over for this team middle of the season, but the way that he drove them against the number one team in the nation. And had them on the ropes, but just... Two bad throws came back to cost him. And if you're a, if you're if you're a bulldog fan, you gotta love the effort though that your team put up. Colby Cameron, the junior, maybe he'll be back next year. Right now, LSU just trying to drain this clock down. And off the blue. That'll take another 40 down. So we have a rematch on our hand. We've been hearing a lot of talk about rematch, and I still don't understand what, what that's all about or what they're talking about. Maybe this is it. Georgia and LSU will meet the first second round matchup that we have set. It's Georgia versus LSU. What bowl game will they pick? Will they tempt fate? Even if it is in the Georgia Dome again by being the number one seed in the first two rounds, you get those. You get 68% of the ticket sales. So it will be LSU fans jam-packed in there. Once you get to those Elite Eight games, though, in the Final Four, it's all 50-50 after that. Do you tempt fate? Do you take the Georgia Dome? Or do you go to Memphis? Do you go to Florida? What do you do if you're Les Miles? What do you do? On fourth and two, they're going to try to attempt a really long field goal. Maybe just give them another practice at a 52-yarder. That's the only thing I can think of is why they're even lined up for a field goal. Why not give our kids some more practice? Alaman misses it, so Les Miles wanted to give him some practice, and that's exactly why. Just under the upright. Oh, and I think it hit the upright. That'll do it. Your 2011 New Orleans Bowl champions, back-to-back -back New Orleans Bowl champions, the LSU Tigers. They lost last year in the Chick-fil-A Bowl in the second round. Do they dare go back, and do they dare try to challenge the Georgia Bulldogs in their backyard? There you see the pick six by Claiborne. There was the big time seal on this game for LSU. A couple of handshakes, a lot of respect from both these teams, but LSU for the second year in a row, they'll be taking home the New Orleans Bull Trophy. Stick that one in the trophy case, and they move on. Alfred Blue, 133 yards on the ground. And that's why Les Miles has decided to go with him over Spencer Ware this last couple weeks. For Louisiana Tech, yeah, you see him there. Put up a really good fight, but in the end it wasn't enough. Let's get some highlights in you. Jordan Jefferson. Look at that spiral. That went in there to Odell Beckham. I think that was the first score of the game. Here's Alfred Blue. Look, look at that run. How good is this guy? Took that one to the house. Yes, indeed. And then, one more time. The play of the game. Claiborne. The pick six. He was trying to go to his go-to guy who had been making an impact the entire game. That was Quentin Patton. It just wasn't meant to be tonight. Or I should say today. It's one in the afternoon. But for anything from both LSU and Louisiana Tech, they have all night ahead of them. Hit the streets. Enjoy one more night in New Orleans. As LSU will be celebrating a big victory and then it will be off. Either back home because they are in their home state. And that's the advantage of being number one. Or 
It'll be off to the next city, wherever it may be. The Bowl Championship Series Playoffs. Let's get some stats at you before we move on. Player stats. Jordan Jefferson, you see him. Two interceptions. They certainly got to address that. 211 yards passing. On the other side, Cameron. 20 for 36, 255 yards, two touchdowns. He had two picks of his own. On Tex running day, you uh, and Hunter Lee ran it five times, 28 yards. On the other side of it, Alfred Blue, 12 attempts, 133 yards and a touchdown. And, of course, those receiving numbers, Odell Beckham, five grabs. I mean, 106 yards and the touchdown. And you see Shepard. And on the other side for Louisiana Tech, Quentin Patton. Man, seven receptions, 120 yards. And, of course, you see Akira. Five nabs. 78 yards. And now taking a look at the defense for Tech. There's the numbers. A couple of sacks down the line. And then looking at LSU couple of sacks and the big interceptions. Finally, get some team stats at you. Uh, total offense, LSU, almost 100 yards more than Tech over there. Passing yards, Louisiana Tech got them there. And third down conversions, both teams struggled a bit there. Red zone efficiency, and again, I, I, I go back to that fumble if that fumble in the first half didn't happen for Tech and they score in the red zone, I think that that might have been a whole different game. Despite the interception, I don't know if those interceptions get thrown. I think it's a whole different game. Three turnovers, two on Louisiana State side. Uh, the rest of that's all self-explanatory. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the charts. Where is LSU going to be going in the second round? And it has just been announced by Les Miles down on the field. LSU is electing to choose the AutoZone Liberty Bowl as their destination for their round two rematch with the Georgia Bulldogs. It's LSU in Georgia in Memphis. And that one will be next week.